When you go to the seaside, barnacles may not be the first thing you admire, but next time you're there, it would be well worth stopping to take a closer look so you can see how interesting they actually are. Barnacles are exclusively marine and tend to live in shallow and tidal waters, typically in erosive settings, and are very well adapted to this harsh environment. Although barnacles look like mollusks, they are actually closely related to crabs and lobsters. There are many different species of barnacles inhabiting the shores, however the most common barnacles found around the coast of the UK are the acorn barnacles, whose Latin name is Semibalanus balanoides. The rocky shore is a very diverse ecosystem, compromising of pools of salty water, boulders and pebbles. There is a wide range of well-adapted species inhabiting the shore that interact and depend on each other to survive with the widely varying conditions. There's actually over a thousand different barnacle species currently known, and these are arthropods, which are placed in the phylum Crustacea and the class Cirripedia. Cirripedia means curled foot. Barnacles have a simple life cycle. Fertilised eggs hatch into one-eyed larvae known as nauplius, which are initially brooded by the parent and are finally released for free swimming. This is when they are most at risk to predation. In the cyprid stage of their life cycle, the barnacles explore the potential surfaces until they find a suitable location to attach permanently. A big decision considering this will be where it will remain attached for the rest of its life. Then they secrete a glue-like substance from the cement glands and attach themselves head first, which then forms the base of the first pair of antennae. Imagine spending most of your life standing on your head and eating with your feet. Well, that's exactly how barnacles spend most of their lives. Barnacles don't always choose rocks to attach to. Some attach to other species, such as limpets and snails. This means they can hitch a ride. They hitchhike on turtles and several species of whales, where they are known to travel for years at a time. Some barnacles are also typically found attached to boats. Dentists are studying the glue they attach with because of its ability to stick so tight. It is known as nature's strongest superglue and can attach to almost anything. They are not hard to miss as they cover the rocks of the intertidal zone, which is the area between the high and the low tide. The intertidal zone imposes several challenges. The barnacles, depending on the location of their attachment, can be without water for many hours. The barnacle overcomes this by closing their orbiculum plates, trapping water inside their shell. Barnacles consist of an upside down body in a hard exoskeleton made of chitin. It is covered by several plates, four, six or eight depending on the species, which are made of calcium carbonate. The two calcareous plates which open and close for feeding and mating are controlled by the scutal depressor muscles, the scutal abductor muscle and the tergal depressor muscle. Immediately inside the barnacle are the six thoracic legs whose purpose are to bring food to the mouth, set up a current over the gills for respiration and use as a sensory organs to detect danger and water level change. The digestive system is made up of the mouth, esophagus, stomach, intestine and anus. So food is wafted towards the mouth, stored in the stomach for some time, and then the nutrients absorbed in the small intestine and waste excreted out of the anus and back into the ocean. Barnacles are hermaphrodites that have both the female and male reproductive organs, the penis, testes and eggs, so they can reproduce by cross-fertilisation. Therefore they reproduce with other barnacles rather than themselves. If you have a look at this interesting species under a microscope, you can really see its true beauty. When it is immersed in seawater, the two plates located at the top can be opened to allow feeding and mating. Barnacles are filter feeders and like to feed on phytoplankton. They feed by sweeping the particles from the water using their feathery fan-like feet, which filter the particles into the mouth. The movement of cirri also sets up a current over the gills for respiration. The same opening used for feeding is also used for reproduction. Semibalanus balanoides has separate sexes who must copulate to reproduce. You might think that being glued down and surrounded by armour plating would render this difficult. Indeed it would, but the male barnacles possess a male organ of monstrous proportions. Were you to multiply its length up to human proportions, we are talking roughly about 20 metres. The mighty organ then withers away and males turn into females for the next season. Barnacles can also reproduce through a method called sperm casting, in which the male barnacle releases his sperm into the water and females pick it up and fertilise their eggs. When the tide finally returns, allowing the barnacle to feed, reproduce and respire, it's not all good news for them. They now have the immense force of crashing waves. The size and shape of each barnacle very much depends on how exposed they are to big waves. Those inhabiting areas of the most forceful waves adapt a flatter and less produce of body shape. 
Barnacles are thought to be one of the oldest surviving creatures on the planet, as they are believed to date back millions of years, and are incredible creatures built to withstand some of the most extreme conditions. So next time you're at the shore, take a minute to appreciate the daily challenges facing the barnacle.